So this uh, RNA viruses starting from the Rio variety family to by RNA and uh, paramecjo or homecjo. Uh, likewise, uh, almost all the uh, RNA virus family, uh, their general characteristics and the important diseases uh, included in its family. Uh, as per our syllabi, we, we, we have completed our discussion, including the retrovirality, which I have taken as a combined class with the Jaluki student. Uh, hopefully, uh, I, I feel everything is over there. Of course, uh, I should say that it's not uh, uh, everything. Like, uh, there are many other infections which are not uh, given in your syllabi, but as a veterinarian, you must uh, know, including some of the human diseases. And, uh, Please do read all these uh, uh, aspects, and if you get any uh, issues or uh, in understanding the things, then further we can discuss it. So we'll be shifting to the DNA viruses, and we'll start with the pox variety family. As all of you know, this is considered to be the largest vertebrate virus. I'm using the word vertebrate virus. It is not the largest virus because we you know in uh, some of the amoeba species, uh, uh, it's a parasite. Uh, a kind of virus called as a mini virus uh, were found to be the largest existing virus in this planet but uh, the mini virus is not causing any infection in um, animals or in human it's in uh, a parasite uh, like amoeba uh, uh, they, they harbor this particular virus so uh, if you consider the viruses of our importance then we will always say that pox is the largest vertebrate virus because of its size of around 250 to 350 nanometer and it is having some sort of a brick separate appearance does not uh, maintain any symmetry if you can remember when we talk about the virus symmetry then uh, we we said about this uh, icosahedral symmetry and helical symmetry, that uh, two basic symmetry we discuss it. But uh, these Fox viruses, they belong, uh, they, they do not have any specific symmetry. We sometimes call it a complex symmetry. Complex is not a symmetry. Rather, we should say that the capsomere arrangement is not in an order to be called it as a specific say. That's why we say that the uh, Fox virus doesn't have a symmetry. Okay? So, uh, Well, uh, that Fox uh, uh, variety family, uh, they include some of the important diseases of uh, uh, animals as well as uh, the human. As you know, the Fox, uh, uh, the small Fox, uh, which is uh, which causes uh, millions of deaths throughout the globe and in human history, it is considered to be the biggest uh, viral infection, killing. Uh, millions of people throughout the globe and this is the success of mankind that uh, as on today's date we don't have the pox virus a small pox infection in the globe it was totally eradicated uh, from this uh, globe small pox virus so this is the pox variety mm, this is uh, as the virus is a very bigger in size is uh, genomic uh, size is also very very big almost uh, 350 to 200 kilo bases uh, um, is the size and it can harbor a lot of information for its survival inside the host cell. And that is the reasons why the pox virus, although it is a DNA virus, but it replicates in the cytoplasm of the infected host cell. This is a very commonly asked question. Please note it down. Why pox virus? Pox is a DNA virus, but still it replicates in the cytoplasm of the infected host cell. Whereas we know that in general, the DNA viruses, they replicate in the nucleus because they need the nuclear enzyme. So the pox virus is an exception which can grow in the cytoplasm of the infected host cell. Why? Because they carry all the enzyme needed for their replication. They are least dependent on the host cell for uh, its uh, uh, transcriptions and uh, replications. However, it must utilize the host cell uh, protein synthesis machinery in the surface of the ribosome. So it is well uh, available in the cytoplasm and all the enzymes needed for its replication, they harbor in their genome. So the pox virus can independently grow and multiply in the cytoplasm of the infected host cell. The name pox derived from a word called as pox, which means some pustular eruption. As you know, one of the characteristic feature of pox infection is formation of blister. 
switch fill vesicles in the skin surface in the mucosal surface and gradually it uh, uh, um, give rise to an pustular lesions uh, it's a hyperplastic uh, changes that occur in the epithelium uh, and because of which it is uh, this group of viruses has been termed as pox derived from the term pox similarly this virus when we inoculate in the embryonic chicken egg then in the corneal antrich membrane we observe uh, the some of the discrete white lesions which are commonly called as pock lesion since this virus always produces a kind of lesions in the corneal antrich membrane that is another uh, uh, point why this particular group of viruses are designated as pox so pox very the family include this cordo and entomo entomo include all the insect pox viruses not only the uh, higher uh, animals even the insect also suffer from pox virus infection so we are more concerned about the cordo pox virini sub family that include most of the pox virus infection of human as well as in animals okay so as you know this uh, if you go to the uh, complex uh, uh, symmetry of the virus it's the largest dna virus Usually, the inner core material is uh, surrounded with a layer, a membranous uh, capsid layer, and you can see two lateral bodies. And this is of unknown uh, functions. Why it is needed for the virus is not yet known. So these two lateral bodies, accumulation of some proteins, we can see, uh, and the inner core is look like a dumbbell. The dumbbell that we use it for exercise uh, exactly the same way. uh this uh, the inner area that contain the nucleic acid which is a very large genome size including lot of nuclear proteins mostly the enzymes they needed it for its replication they have their own enzyme a viral enzyme and then they are subsequently surrounded with some membrane and some of the pox viruses uh, are pox cell of course there are two types one is the Uh, non envelope uh, and another is the envelope port uh, category pox viruses are infectious in nature mostly when the pox virus remain within the cells and this is called as the mesial variant without this envelope but uh, outside the host also the uh, match uh, this envelope variant are available both are infectious okay so another category of pox virus which we call them as the para pox virus where the uh, uh the, the the outer coating is somewhat different from that of the other conventional autopox virus genus so that uh, parapox are designated as cocoon shape just like the insect uh, cocoon the, the the surface layer they appear under the electron microscope so we'll see some pictures in the later part so uh, this is the general morphology of pox viruses as you can see here the surface uh, the uh, the things are some tubular deposits that takes place and they do not give rise to any uh, definite symmetry to the virus we call it as a complex symmetry okay do you see the slide yes sir okay okay fine so uh, if you had any query any questions in between you can uh, ask me okay So uh, this is another electron microscopic transmission electron microscopic picture of a pox virus. Probably it's a, a goat pox virus, but uh, looking at it, we can say it's a goat pox or a cow pox or a buffalo pox, etc. Or cow pox. Okay. Only the para pox and other auto pox can be seen as a different uh, uh, on the basis of the structure. This is the inner core, which is a dumbbell shaped uh, uh, area. and this is contained the nucleic acids and a uh, protein capsid and then several layer you can see it and these are the two lateral bodies they found here and here of unknown uh, function so uh, what uh, we understand about the uh, the, the, the genome and uh, physiology of pox virus is that they had uh, numerous protein minimum of 100 number of proteins every pox virus they carry in their Uh, structures and they can code it for all these uh, different protein, even 100 to 200, depending on the different species. And some of these proteins they counteract, they counteract the host adaptive and innate immune response. So different way, they can be an uh, inhibitors of complements. They may be any modulate the chemokines, etc., etc. So 
uh, with the help of all these uh, uh, virus protein, they are able to establish infection in the host. Okay, but at the same time, because of this complex number of proteins that are present on the surface, it is also a very good immunogen. So most of the false viruses can easily be controlled by vaccination. And it says that if an animal suffer from a fox virus, they got solid immunity throughout its life. The immunity persists for a quite long period. It is only because of the complex number of protein that present on the surface. Okay, that gives us very good protection after natural infections or vaccination. So as you can see, they have their own uh, enzymes. So independent of the nucleus and the cytoplasms, they can carry out their replications. We'll not go details about it the whole uh, uh, replication process of fox virus. But what we understand, what we need to remember is that they carry almost all the enzyme needed for its replication. And utilizing it independently, they can grow in the cytoplasm and then it mature virus particles may come out of the host cells, okay? Now coming to the uh, different members, we are interested for the Cordopox VDB subfamily. The other is the uh, Entomo. Entomo, we are not interested. We get different genera, ortho, para, capri, lepuri, sui, av, mollusca, yapa. These are the different uh, uh, genera under this cortopox virini. Uh, however, we are going to restrict our discussions with only few like orthopox virus that include the cow fox and buffalo fox. The same disease manifestation also we see in the camel. Uh, the vaccinia, again, this is a question mark, where from this has come? It will say that this vaccinia is that original uh, Jenner's uh, cowpox virus, uh, uh, given the name is the vaccinia. As you know, vaccinia is, is an excellent vector for team delivery. Uh, a lot of vaccines earlier people use it through vaccinia vector. And this orthopox also includes the variola. Variola, I have not mentioned about it because variola includes the smallpox virus of human. Okay, variola. Variola is the uh, species of uh, smallpox uh, infections in human. And in the parapox, we had a disease called ORF, although it is not in your syllabus, but I will uh, include it as because this disease is very much prevalent in Northeast India as well as in other parts of India. Then CAFRI include these three infections, seed pox, cot pox, and lumpy skin disease. Probably all of you have heard about this uh, LSDV infection, lumpy skin disease virus infection. For quite long period, the uh, uh, even up, uh, four years back, uh, we never thought that this lumpy skin will be uh, there in our country. But uh, somehow, uh, from different continent, the virus transmitted and uh, entered in our country. And very recently, last year, in the, uh, we could see a massive uh, spread of lumpy skin disease virus in Northeast India, including the West Bengal and the Odisha. So the disease is very much prevalent in Northeast India. So we must know this particular disease. So this uh, seed pox, goat pox, and lumpy skin disease, they are under the capri pox virus genus. Lepuri include uh, uh, some of the rabbit infections. Sui pox include the swine pox, which is a very minor kind of disease. And another very important killer disease in poultry is the avian pox virus that causes the fall pox. And different species of bird, we can get pigeon pox, quail pox, turkey pox, etc. But we'll be restricting our discussion to the fowl pox, which is equally in the uh, same for the other species. Okay. And others are mollusky and the yata pox that include a monkey pox virus. This creates an uh, alarm throughout the globe, like uh, this might be a virus which uh, may be causing similar kind of disease in human. There is a possibility. So in the wildlife, uh, this disease has been recorded in the monkey. Of course, it's not the purview of our uh, lecture to discuss it. Okay, so we'll come to this picture later on. As uh, everybody understands the populism, how it looks like the skin eruptions that produce in, uh, in this kind of intensity. This is a C-Pox virus infection. Uh, the pig also, the surface, is, uh, the populisms are produced. So we'll come to the genetic characteristics of the virus, like uh, the genome uh, size and other, we already discussed it. So another aspect, what we need to know is that the virus is very, very stable in the environment. Very stable in the sense, study says that the virus even can purchase in dust material for one to two years. 
outside the animal body, such a hardy virus, and that uh, uh, may cause another uh, infections when the uh, animal get exposed to the virus. So they are very much uh, resistant to common disinfectant and temperature and very much hardy virus. This is an important information, you should know it. So the virus therapy in the cytoplasm already we discussed it, so can be easily grown and propagated for diagnosis purpose or for vaccine production in chicken eggs uh, by Korea and treatment in of inoculation, as well as uh, varieties of cell cultures are available where we can efficiently propagate the virus and can detect it. So this is a very easy process for um, diagnosis. So uh, hemagglutination is a property exhibited all by all the old folks viruses. So these are some of the general characteristics. Then uh, pathogenicity, uh, if you talk about this Fox virus pathogenicity, then only uh, one aspect we can say that uh, it, it, it can cause some epithelial uh, uh, hyperplastic conditions. That means uh, some of the proteins, uh, early proteins of Fox virus, they behave as an epidermal growth factor. As a result, the presence of the viral protein causes uncontrolled proliferation. Uncontrolled means uh, uh, more proliferation of the cells. I should not use the word uncontrolled. It's the, uh, like um, uh, rapid proliferation of those infected epithelial cells, particularly in the uh, stratum uh, uh, germinative arm and the corneum, this two layer of the skin. As a result, the hyperplastic conditions develop. And that's the main pathology of Fox. And it may not be restricting to the epithelial surfaces. It may also cause this um, lesions in the internal organs, particularly in the lungs. So uh, these are some of the photographs showing the, uh, the choreolanthic membrane root of inoculation. If you inoculate this kind of white discrete lesions are produced. This is called as the POC lesion, P-O-C-K, POC lesion. This is another reason why this particular group of viruses have been named as Fox variety family. Okay, these are the Fox lesions in the choreolanthic membrane. However, in this uh, cow Fox virus, it causes hemorrhagic fog. This is a particular characteristic, and these are diagnostically important, right? So, if you see the uh, histopathological section in the skin, then you can see this kind of the uh, cautery um, inclusion body. Uh, mostly the cells develop a very large vacuole, empty spaces they develop within the cells. The nucleus is pushed to the peripheral area and you can see a very large inclusion body forming the cytoplasm. So these are all the inclusion body, not the nucleus. As if look like the nucleus, but these are not the nucleus. Nucleus is pushed towards the periphery of the cell and this kind of uh, lesions are common in the histopathological observation. Right. So the orthopox virus, uh, we'll be discussing about this cowpox and the bustle of pox. Uh, these are some of the uh, spect of vaccinia. I will not discuss. Okay, coming to the cowpox virus. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I should say that it's not a common disease. Uh, it's not a highly prevalent disease. So uh, we are not much bothered about this particular infection. But since it has been reported in India a long time back, 1970 and 90. Uh, 1990, another outbreak was detected in UP, and after that, uh, really, the disease uh, record uh, from many places of India. So, uh, this disease uh, that causes a typical pox infections in cow, the generalized uh, infection, of course, this is not a uh, fatal uh, infection. The positive organism is the cowpox virus under the genus orthopox virus, and uh, the, as the virus is very stable, um, Milking cows of the natural host and it has also been seen in the elephant, cat, and other carnivores. These are uh, incidental hosts. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, they may develop, but naturally it doesn't happen in those uh, animal species. Okay, so the cow pox also can uh, cause some lesions in human. Uh, I'll show you some uh, photographs where, uh, particularly in the hand, uh, persons are handling those, uh, uh, making those animal and having the lesions in the uh, teeth and other. It may cause some uh, sort of an ulcerated area uh, that sometimes called as the um, malignant pastils or carbuncles. That's a rarely it heals. It uh, lasts for a long period. Some epithelial growths are produces even. Uh, mm, 
Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, one legions of um, uh, veterinarians in France, uh, probably. Uh, he developed uh, lesions accidentally, he, he get exposed to the virus, and this kind of uh, vascular lesions are produced by the cowpox uh, virus, okay? So, uh, while the rodents act as a reservoir, so studies of epidemiology of the virus found that the wild rodent may harbor and may be a common source of infection for uh, the cows. Okay. Uh, spreading is basically by direct contact, and then uh, during the milking process, uh, the human can transmit from one animal to the other, and mechanically it can be transmitted. So wild rodent also, uh, wild rodents also play a role in the uh, dissemination. Now, in the pathogenesis, if you see uh, the virus once it enter uh, uh, through uh, the mucus epithelium, and then. Uh, uh, the viremia starts, uh, and then uh, when this uh, at the stage of viremia, they basically uh, the tropisms occur in the uh, epithelial surfaces, and where it causes pustular lesions, uh, followed by papule formations, and then um, these uh, lesions are straightly explained as an epithelial hyperplasia caused by the early protein of the virus. Okay. So uh, this kind of uh, pop uh, um, uh, pustular lesions are produces uh, in the skin surface, and in cattle uh, mostly uh, in the in the other uh, the lesions are more more, more prominent. Uh, sometimes it may be an ulcerated area can be seen. Uh, beside this, in the peri anal area also we can see this kind of lesions in uh, cattle. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, coming to the diagnosis, so the, the lesions are very, very specific in case of the fox, so it doesn't uh, um, uh, complicate with other infections, so easily we can ha get the idea about the uh, fox uh, lesions. But however, for identification of the uh, uh, organisms, we can go for, um, starting from the electron microscopy, the facilities are there, uh, or we can go for AZPT. The most simplest process is uh, the AZPT, that is the precipitation phase, and after you can perform it for uh, detection of the viral antigens in the uh, clinical samples. And clinical samples obviously will be the skin scan that contain large amount of virus particles. So uh, the isolation, as I said, the hemorrhagic pop can be demonstrated in chorealantic membrane. So, as well as in the cell culture, any type of varieties of cell cultures, in like vero cells, then uh, uh, bovine kidney cells, then uh, baby hamster uh, kidney cells, uh, we can uh, grow the virus and uh, it can be detected. So, uh, coming to the prevention and control, of course, uh, including the uh, PCR, which is not been mentioned here, so that become an easy tool for uh, rapid detection. So prevention and control, uh, basically, we should not much bother about it. This is not a life-threatening disease, uh, and it's uh, self-limiting. After a week or two, uh, the lesions uh, heal up, and the animal become solid immunity throughout its life. So uh, uh, only thing is that through um, farm utensils and the uh, handlers, the virus is not uh, transmitting to the other animal. That uh, has any care we need to take care. Uh, yeah. So as such, the vaccination is not practical for uh, this particular disease. Similar kind of disease in buffalo pox, which we are detected in uh, uh, India and South uh, East Asian countries. So in other countries, the disease has not been seen. One particular strain, so BP4, buffalo pox 4, uh, detected in India. Uh, initially, a lot of controversies were there, whether it is a different or it is a cowpox virus, still like genetically almost related this to virus, but still in ICTV they have given the name as buffalo pox virus. Of course, they have not get the proper place uh, in the ICTV classification. So under this orthopox virus, uh, this is uh, the disease is exactly similar to that of um, the old process is similar to that of the cowpox infection. So here also, Mm, the vaccination is not performed. Now, coming to that, this is called as ORP, ORP disease, uh, called as the ORP. Uh, uh, in, in scientific word, we can explain the contagious pustular dermatitis. So, uh, the highly contagious disease under the parapox uh, uh, genus, 
the organism is or virus. It can uh, cause some uh, skin lesions, particularly in the sheep and uh, goat. The disease has been recorded. So uh, this is very common infections, uh, northeast as well as in other parts. Wherever the sheep and goat rearing husbandry practices are there, definitely we get this uh, uh, or infection. So not much life threatening, of course, in uh, newborn uh, kids or lambs, uh, the disease severity is more and uh, because of uh, uh, malnutrition uh, or starvation, the animal may die. So uh, this, is, this is very much similar to the sheep uh, uh, pox virus, and they are sensitive to iterant chloroforms. And these are the uh, uh, cocoon sepet, cocoon sepet virus under electron microscope. What I said previously, parapox. This is the characteristic. We can see some sort of uh, striation on its surface, crisscrossing striation. Some people try to describe it as an uh, uh, yarn of wool. Just like a wool ball, how the uh, traits decrease for each other, and uh, exactly in the same way it is described. Okay, so basically you find these uh, infections in sheep and goat. They are the natural host. Uh, uh, however, accidentally in ox, dog, as well as in the human, that this uh, has been seen. These are uh, incidental hosts only. So model spread is uh, mainly direct contact. Uh, the infected animal has killed the virus and through contaminated object, it can be transmitted. So particularly the suckling kids may get it from the lamb during uh, suckling process, okay? So if you go to the pathogenesis, it is the exactly same, the epithelial hyperplasia that occur and it causes uh, the postular lesions that produce typical of the box. So mostly it is seen, it is uh, seen in the hairless part of the skin uh, under the interdigital space. This picture you can see in the, uh, near the nostrils and in the mouth commissure, the infections, uh, uh, lesions can be uh, seen. And these lesions sometimes grow up to a bigger wart-like masses uh, with hard keratinized crust. So thereby that, uh, that, uh, that uh, 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 creates problem to the animal for grazing and uh, particularly the lambs and kids with the milk suckling it creates problem. So in that case, mortality may go up to 20%, but basically uh, it is characterized by high morbidity, 100% morbidity, means total production loss takes place at that particular stage, body weight goes down, etc. So uh, some more pictures you can see. Uh, this is, of course, uh, the mouth lesions uh, very typical of ORF, and looking at it, we can uh, get the idea about this uh, disease. Of course, it needs to be differentiated with the uh, uh, box and coat box infection. So, uh, for diagnostic purpose, again, the laboratory diagnosis based on EZPT uh, is an easy technique for rapid detection. However, we can go for the isolation of the virus in uh, uh, cell culture as well as. Uh, and where we can see the ballooning and the intracytoplasmic inclusion uh, formations in the uh, infected cells. And the PCF based detection, obviously, will be here. So, for prevention and control, uh, cell culture propagated attenuated vaccine strains are available. Uh, one such strain which is uh, uh, used in India is the Mukteshwar 59 oblique 05 strain. You know the Mukteshwar. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a place uh, in the Uttarakhand where we had a virology laboratory under IVRI. And in that laboratory, they develop an uh, attenuated strain uh, by passing almost 135 passes of the uh, wild type virus in this uh, primary lamp and testicle cell culture. Uh, they could get an attenuated strain, and that gives us very good protection against the disease and these vaccines are available even from india we export this vaccine to some of the uh, african uh, countries so that's the uh, aspect uh, the viruses when you grow in this kind of uh, cells particularly the epithelial cells so ballooning rounding and ballooning these are the changes which uh, indicate the growth of the virus this is called typical cytopathic effect produced by the of virus okay Coming to this lumpy skin disease, as you know, this is an emerging disease in our country. For quite a long period, we read that the disease is prevalent in Africa and the Middle East. 
uh, not have been transmitted to other. But uh, as you know, the, because of these uh, demographic changes uh, throughout the globe and open market policy, the diseases are also spreading very rapidly. And it, it, it started in our country somewhere in 2018 in Urissa, suddenly it uh, spread the disease and then gradually disseminated to the other part. And very recently, last year, uh, we, we experienced still it is going on a lot of skin disease uh, in uh, Northeast India. Okay, luckily we couldn't report any cases from state of Mizoram, but in all other northeastern states they recorded this particular disease. Okay, so this uh, particular infection is on um, uh, uh, least a disease earlier. Why um, they have listed as a least a disease because of which uh, uh, huge economic losses that occur because of this uh, disease infection. Okay. So not in terms of mortality, of course, mortality is moderate, but this disease causes total production loss in the cattle. And uh, because of which uh, this is uh, considered to be an uh, uh, highly important disease uh, in cattle. So lumpy skin disease, at least some sort of lumps are produced in the skin. Basically these are the lymphoid organs, subcutaneous uh, lymphoid organ where uh, the um, swelling occurs and the disease is manifested there. And causative organism, the lumpy skin disease by that. Here, it in fact, the uh, cattle are the natural cause of the disease, but the virus is a close relative of the and coat fox virus. So under the genus captive fox virus, please note it down. Lumpy skin disease virus belong to the genus captive fox virus. This is a very commonly asked question in all examination. So captive fox, we understand these are causing the disease in uh, sheep and goat, but this lumpy skin disease is a member under captive fox virus genus, and they are very much related to sheep and goat fox virus. So by antigen detection test, uh, most of the time we cannot confirm the detected. It's only basis of uh, molecular detections and uh, sequence analysis only we can find it out the difference between the virus. So the virus is uh, rapidly inactivated in chlorophyll chloroform as because they are having the envelope and the destruction of the envelope may lead to inactivation of the virus. So cattle are the natural host of the disease as uh, I could uh, collect it uh, out of the 19 something uh, from uh, lumpy skin disease, and uh, these are some of the photographs. Uh, the chronopolitas are uh, of anatomy department. He shared with me, and this is in his village. This uh, last year, this kind of lumpy skin disease are produced. A uh, very prominent lumps are produced on the skin, subcutaneous uh, sites. That's why it is called as lumpy skin disease. And these are basically on hyperproliferations of the lymphoid. Cells and the cells and the subcutaneous places. Okay, this kind of uh, uh, lumps are produced. Look like the fox lesions, but quite bigger. Sometimes they sloughs off an ulcerate area. We can see uh, below or in the skin surface. It's the characteristics of uh, the lumpy skin disease virus. Now, although uh, uh, the virus is very stable and excreted to the environment, but majority of the study revealed that it is transmitted mostly by culex and it is mosquitoes. Mechanically, they transmit from one animal to the other. And the acute phase of the disease is when the animal is having high fever and circulating viruses appear in the blood, they mechanically get transmitted from one to the other, okay? So mechanical vectors take a major role in transmission of lung skin disease. However, uh, some uh, through needle inserts, uh, through blood inoculation, this is another possibility. Even uh, certain studies reveal that through semen, the virus can be transmitted intrauterine depositions or by direct contact. Also, the disease transmission has been recorded. But majority of the study scientific data reveal that it is by the mosquito mechanical vector the disease transmission takes place. Right. So if we go to this uh, pathogenesis, and you'll find they have the trophism so the lymph nodes, uh, and then the uh, uh, swelling of the lymph nodes takes place because of the presence of the virus and its replication in the lymph nodes. 
So the superficial leaf node, they enlarge it. Sometimes it goes 10 times to their normal size and become very, very visible in the skin surface as in the previous slide I've shown you, okay? So as I say, the mortality goes up to 3%, not very high. This is self-limiting disease after two weeks, three weeks, the animals will recover. But what will happen, the, the skin uh, quality will deteriorate and those uh, skins cannot be used for hide purpose in the commercial hide uh, industry. So there is total uh, like uh, defective hides are produced and doesn't have any market value. So that way also it is. Uh, and secondly, that uh, once the animals are suffering from the disease and their total production loss takes place in the animal. Uh, these are more lesions, uh, uh, very prominent lesions. Looking at it, uh, we can suspect about this. However, in the uh, last uh, discussion or the last set that we talked about this bovine leukemia, where also this kind of uh, nodular lesions are formed, so uh, have to differentiate it. So here, there's uh, the cast, skin cast sloughs off and the ulcerated areas are produced. So, irrespective of all these groups, the disease has been seen. So. Uh, some of the clinical manifestations uh, are describing here, and uh, uh, generalized lymph adenopathy is the condition that we can describe. So, the laboratory uh, diagnosis is again the uh, same uh, process uh, uh, from the clinical sensor symptoms, and we can collect the samples for confirmatory detections by the laboratory test. We can go for isolation, identification, and PCR based detections. We can do this. Okay. So this, uh, this uh, disease can be prevented uh, by vaccination process because uh, arthropod control and other, particularly the mosquitoes, is uh, not possible in the phase of outbreak. Uh, uh, in that case, the vaccines will work very well. And uh, in all the countries, they mainly go for these vaccines for controlling. Uh, one of the standard uh, live attenuated strain is the Nithling strain vaccine. But unfortunately, our country is not prepared at this moment because only very recently the disease has uh, detected uh, in a certain state. The vaccine is available in the international market, uh, which is uh, prepared for this initial strain vaccine, live attenuated for vaccination. However, the good thing is that since the virus is antigenically related to sickpox and gold box, the sickpox vaccines can be used effectively in controlling this disease. So sickpox is very well available in the market, so immediately we can go for uh, administering sickpox uh, vaccines to control this particular disease. Okay, By the time a, 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 particular genus specific vaccines will come, uh, we can use the sickbox vaccines. So that is about the lumpy skin disease. Uh, now coming to the, the sickbox and goat pox infection. This is another important disease under the pox virus family. And these two diseases are Characterization then we can see that this uh, uh, the, the, the sickpox virus uh, having a deletion of 21 nucleotides in comparison to the goatpox virus. Otherwise, the whole disease process is exactly the same. Sheep are also suffering from goatpox, and goats are also suffering from sickpox virus. So uh, that's why we'll be discussing it together as sickpox and goatpox infection. Okay. So this is very common in our country. Every year we see the outbreaks and the area where uh, uh, the animals were not exposed to the virus earlier, then the, the disease causes severe devastations and causes large scale mortality. As you can remember, in 2014 and 15, we experienced a massive outbreak of uh, Goat pox virus in uh, in the in the Cerro population in Mizoram. Cerro is the state animal and it is a wildlife, uh, and they are uh, basically not suffering from infections. Uh, but this time uh, we could see a massive outbreak, and that leads to uh, a death of Cerro. Up to 700 to 800 Cerro they died uh, over a period of almost uh, one year. It persists. 
and uh, we suspect that it is a spillover of the virus from the domestic because at the same time the initial phase of the outbreak we could see the disease in domestic uh, uh, growth in Mizoram. So this is uh, important death phase causes high mortality and uh, this uh, virus uh, <clears throat> mainly it infects the sheep and uh, coal. Uh, and some species like the merino uh, uh, breeds are uh, more susceptible to uh, this infection than the other species. So, uh, like that way, uh, some breed specificity are there. So, lambs they suffer more infection than the adults. So, if you go through the uh, mode of transmission, you find all this direct contact, direct contact, like uh, the virus to excreted through this. Uh, um, uh, metal discharges uh, can be uh, produces aerosol infection and in contact animal will get it and uh, the disease also will occur. Transplacental transfer also takes place uh, during pregnancy period. Dog and cat may act as a mechanical carrier from one cause to the other, so in contact animal may develop the disease and these are the main mode of spread recovery. Okay? Uh, coming to the pathogenesis, then you'll find this is again the same thing, the epithelial hypophysia, the typical of fox uh, variety family, where the lesions are produced not only in the skin surface, even in the mucous epithelium, as well as in the internal organs, particularly in the lung, the visceral organs and tract here, we could see this kind of uh, uh, hyperplastic lesions. Uh, uh, in, in sheep and goat fox. So in that case, the mortality becomes very, very high. If the animal doesn't have any previous exposure record or any immunity, then uh, the disease incidence of uh, severity is very, very high. Okay. So uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tissues, uh, we could see a particular changes that previously we discussed, like a lot of vacuums that produce uh, where the nuclei is pushed to the periphery. Uh, Well, uh, we'll uh, wait for uh, at least one or two minutes, uh, let your friend join, and then we'll continue. As you know, like uh, yesterday uh, session, because of uh, some uh, network error, I could not continue uh, my talk. So uh, we are discussing about this fox variety family, and uh, the important characteristics of fox, uh, uh, individual member under this fox variety family in general we discuss it uh, some of the uh, things that uh, the the, the uh, complex symmetry virus having a very large genome size uh, can code for almost all its essential enzyme needed for application that's why independently they can for applicant in the cytoplasm of host cell the list depend on the, the new uh, nuclear environment for uh, completing its replication cycle so thereafter, we mentioned about this is the largest vertebrate virus and uh, uh, the members uh, under this uh, Cordopox, Pyrene and Entomopox, Entomo, uh, the insect uh, pox virus. However, this uh, Cordopox, uh, the pox virus infection of Cordeta, uh, there we could see uh, so many different genus and uh, some of the genus like the Orthopox uh, genus include the, the the human smallpox infection, variola, and uh, very closely related is the uh, cowpox virus, uh, as well as the buffalo pox. So then uh, we again talk about uh, the parapox viruses, and this parapox viruses, uh, which are uh, typically their appearance is just like the cocoon separate. It is the arrangement of its outer uh, layer. That gives us a cocoon separate, or just like a uh, ball of uh, uh, yarn or wool, uh, how it appears. That uh, things we, we, we discuss. <coughs> uh, if you have any specific query or any things, uh, we can we can discuss uh, during this time. I'm not sharing my slide till now, so we can uh, discuss if you want any clarification or anything. Uh, under chapter or the previous chapter. And so uh, in the parapox, we talk about an old disease uh, of uh, sheep and goat where um, 
is uh, the lesions that produces the uh, mouth uh, and the hair is part of the body, uh, also called as contagious ecchyma or contagious vascular dermatitis condition. So uh, then uh, we, we talk about um, uh, uh, disease in cattle, which become an emerging infection in our area. It is the lumpy skin disease. As I said that, uh, the, the disease was not recorded in India for quite a long period. And uh, it's, uh, uh, I think three to four years back, uh, some sporadic outbreak was recorded in the state of Orissa first time. And thereafter, it becomes spread to other areas. And uh, in Northeast uh, India, most of the state, uh, except one or two, uh, we uh, we have recorded this particular infections, uh, which is uh, an uh, economically important disease, uh, folks virus infections, lumpy skin disease. And uh, in the last sessions, we even uh, discussed about the lumpy skin disease. Uh, Infection. Now I'm sharing my slide. Uh, we'll continue from uh, next to the lumpy skin disease. It is a sheep uh, and goat fox infection. Uh, now I'm sharing my slide. Uh, yeah, can you uh, see my slide? I'm keeping it the full uh, screen mode. Can you see my slide? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, this uh, sheep and goat pox, no doubt, this initial two slides we discussed earlier, but uh, let us just recollect uh, what uh, we discussed. It is that these two diseases are uh, caused by two different viruses, but uh, both the viruses are almost similar. We can say 99.9% similar, these two viruses, uh, with a little bit differences are there in the genomic structure. As a uh, result, they have been given an entity as C-Pox and good pox uh, virus. Uh, these two are the positive organism under the Capricox uh, genus. So uh, the disease, uh, vice versa, it may occur. Good pox can infect sheep. Sheep pox can also infect goats. So clinically indistinguishable disease uh, that produced. And uh, we talk about the um, 2014 and 15 outbreak in the wild seros in Mizoram. Uh, large scale mobility we could record it uh, because of this uh, good pox infection. So <clears throat> this uh, three infection, uh, sheep pox, good pox, lumpy skin, as well as the orb, they are antigenically similar. The lumpy skins and uh, sheep pox, good pox are so similar that they can cross protect each other. And there we talk that until and unless we had this uh, a lumpy skin disease, uh, nitling strain virus in our country. Right now, it is not available. So we can use this good pox vaccine to control this lumpy skin disease in cattle. So these uh, two infections uh, is an uh, endemic for our country. And every year we record, and uh, that leads to uh, mortality in uh, susceptible animals. And the the the, the sheep and goat they are the natural host. Uh, uh, and uh, the young ones are uh, more uh, affected by this infection. And this infection is not only occurring into the skin surfaces, the lesions, also the lesions occur in the internal organs like lung and uh, the bron um, bronchial tree, and then that may cause uh, the mortality. Even the secondary uh, bacterial infections may aggravate and can cause uh, mortality which may cause up to 50 percent in outbreaks okay so these viruses they spread by uh, uh, directly in contact animal they spread it or maybe the carrier status animals may uh, spread the virus and become a source of infection and at the phase of outbreak even the domestic pets like dogs and cats they may uh, mechanically transmit from one uh, farm to the other so it's a very stable virus uh, in the environment so easily by uh, from utensils and appliances, even the clothing, shoes, the disease, uh, the virus may uh, transmit from one form to the other. So the pathogenicity uh, it is as same uh, in all the pox infections where uh, the epithelial hyperplasia that occurred because of this uh, growth factor, uh, one of the early protein of the pox virus. But not only that, this is an interplay. The disease production is the interplay of the host immunity and the uh, virus. So 
uh, how much the immunity can uh, prevent the occurrence of the disease depend on the disease severity. So obviously in uh, areas where uh, the population never exposed to the virus earlier, always cause devastation as we can see in the zeros. Uh, so uh, these are some of the points that we need to uh, remember while uh, studying a uh, disease epidemiology. So uh, this is a little scabulous, as I said about this slur, cytoplasmic fracture formation in the infected host cells with the LERS inclusions. And the nucleus is pushed to the peripheral area, which is uh, very common in this uh, type of box, uh, infection. So here it is a very visually scenes like the lung, this kind of nodules formations may produce. And uh, in the sleep, uh, we can see in the hairless part very really prominent lesions, even within the hair also. You can see in these two pictures that uh, the generalized uh, eruptions are there in the skin. And the, the, the clinical signs of symptoms are so prominent that uh, we can uh, uh, I get the idea about the infection. However, as I said, whether it is a sick box or good box, uh, obviously we have to go for the molecular <laughs> confirmation. So uh, the animal obviously will show the, all the typical symptoms of uh, fox like severe, severe itching and setting of wool and even the pregnant use uh, may abort and uh, the, the prominent uh, skin eruptions is a typical signs of fox infection. So the diagnosis is uh, signs and symptoms uh, methods and then uh, for confirmations we can go for uh, the different teams of sample to uh, can collect at the time of uh, postmortem and then uh, anti mortem samples like serums and even the skin scab you can collect it for uh, laboratory confirmation. One of the easiest things is if it has a precipitation test, we can perform it uh, for rapid detection. Uh, besides, uh, the isolation is also quite easy mm -hmm. for uh, isolating the virus uh, in the cell culture. Uh, for, uh, the so initially, we uh, at, the, at, at that particular outbreak of zero box infection. We are confused whether it is a sick box or a good box. And later on, on sequence analysis, we confirm that this is a good box. There is uh, that, uh, that the 21 nucleotide missings was uh, are recorded. Uh, that difference uh, and that become the basis to identify it as a good box uh, virus. So mm, we are lucky that we have the good effective vaccines for controlling the infection. The cells are attenuated uh, vaccines are mainly practice to uh, give uh, protection. However, in the pregnant animal, we prefer the inactivated vaccines because the attenuated strain sometimes may cause uh, abortion. So um, the attenuated vaccines, particularly the Romanian strain vaccines are very commonly used in India. And this is uh, a live attenuated C-pox virus and that they equally give protection against the good pox. And, um, in the endemic area, if the, uh, the animals are reared in a high risk zone where regularly we record this outbreak, then we should go for the uh, vaccination. As soon as the methylene antibody is over, uh, we can start the vaccinations and we can give the protection. As you know, this uh, uh, virus is a very good immunogenic, so uh, the protective immunity uh, always lasts for a longer duration. And usually, uh, they give us full protection against the infection. So by adopting this uh, vaccination, it should be a part of uh, vaccines in the sheep and uh, goat husbandry practice. Okay. Then we shift to the next pox infection, the swine pox. Swine pox is not uh, much taken seriously as because it is uh, a self-limiting uh, disease, uh, hardly lasts for a week and absolutely there is no mortality if uh, other secondary complications or any immunosuppression occur. It's a self-limiting disease and doesn't uh, uh, affect the production much. That's why we do not uh, much uh, take, uh, take this disease seriously. So, however, the disease has been recorded in India as well as in the northeast uh, India, where this positive the organism the sweet pox virus and uh, it produces the typical uh, skin lesions and direct contact then wrapping of skin on the contaminated floor become a source of uh, spreading even the pig lice uh, uh, the hematopinous species can mechanically transmit from one pig to the other pig 
So uh, the typical generalized uh, skin eruptions are produced, but these are of self-limited uh, nature. Within one week or two, these lesions stay uh, resolved, and the animal will be absolutely all right. There is no any sequelae, and uh, rarely there is any production loss that takes place. Okay. So uh, mortality only in uh, secondary complication, particularly in the figlets, may exceed three percent of the West mark. So it is self-limiting kind of disease. The other diagnostic procedure are same that we discuss it. <clears throat> and uh, we do not go for any vaccination as such. We have not recognized the disease uh, as an important viral disease. That's why no vaccines uh, practice or perform uh, in our country. Now coming to one of the major disease in poultry, the poultry pox. So there are uh, many species, almost each species is having their own pox virus infections like Canary pox, uh, uh, and pox, and then Miana pox, uh, pigeon pox, cetacean quail pox, etc. For all species, they have their own uh, pox uh, uh, viruses. And the domestic chicken, we call it a fall pox virus infection. And this is a very common infection and a very stable virus in the environment and uh, caused by this fall pox virus under the genus avipox virus. Okay. So uh, we are not going to discuss about the other AB pox virus, uh, all this, because all are having similar kind of disease manifestation, right? So it's a quite a tough, stable vac uh, virus uh, in the environment, and uh, <clears throat> uh, the domestic fowls are natural host, and all age groups they are uh, susceptible, and. Uh, the disease may be spread by uh, different modes, mainly the direct contact with the impacted bird, obviously, face-to-face uh, -face contact uh, um, will lead to the disease occurrence. Then <coughs> indirect transmissions may also occur through contact with feed, water, utensils, and this blood-sucking arthropods. This is an, uh, come on, like uh, mm, the mosquitoes can transmit the infections from one bird to the other. They uh, also play an important role in this uh, spreading in uh, close confined areas. Okay, uh, but the, the, the arthropods are not a biological vector. Okay, remember they, they they transmit mechanically from one to the other, and the chances are there if an active case is there and the uh, the, the, the the virus is circulating in the blood, that is a possibility that the arthropods or the mosquitoes and ticks can transmit to the next. Bird, okay. The virus persists in the environment for months. As I said, this is a very stable virus, even in that uh, soil and uh, uh, skin setting, shaded skin. As you know, then the pox virus typical skin uh, crust develop, which dries off, and within those uh, scabs, skin scab, the virus they purchase for quite a, a long period. I guess somebody is trying to join again. Okay, thirty-one. So, uh, so this uh, several virus in contact may uh, mean lead to the disease production. So, uh, definitely we have to keep in your mind if any disease outbreak occurs, we have to take care of this for disinfection of this so premises is essential for removal of the virus from the environment. Otherwise, uh, next outbreak may occur because of this environmental source. So really, we get uh, the viruses which can persist in the environment for long period. Most of the viruses are not very much stable, but this is one exception, along with the African swine fever that we're going to discuss in the first second slide. Now, uh, if you go to the pathogenesis, then you'll find two different forms, uh, maybe occurring simultaneously or individually. Uh, what is called as a cutaneous form, where the skin lesions are very prominent in the skin surfaces. Pox lesions are uh, prominent. However, at the same time, the lesions also occur in the uh, microscopicillium, as well as the diphtheritic form. So please note it down. There are two clinical forms of the cutaneous and the diphtheritic form. And this uh, diphtheritic form, the mortality is uh, more than that of the cutaneous form. However, the bird, both the form may occur. That all depends on the species of bird and uh, its immune status, right? So uh, we say that uh, morbidity also may reach up to 95% and the mortality uh, usually uh, up to 50% we could see in this type of infection. 
So the viruses, once they enter through these uh, uh, sources of um, like respiratory tract or even through skin uh, injury, or it may also enter through this oral route and uh, they, they, they subsequently go for the generalized infections and the skin lesions start developing the bird. Okay? This is one postmortem bird where you can see these lesions, pop lesions are producing in the mucus epithelium. After opening up this uh, whole oropharyngeal area, we can see this kind of lesion there. Uh, however, in that uh, cutaneous form, we can see the hairless bird, particularly near this beak and the wattles and combs, we can see this kind of uh, typical uh, lesions of fox, uh, which uh, gradually dries off and finally desates from this area. And this uh, skin scabs, uh, the virus can persist for months together. That's we need to take care, okay? However, this kind of uh, uh, lesions also seen where the lesions that develop and oculonatal leaches uh, produces and are also gradually the lesions are producing in the different birds. You can see this is in Turkey where this kind of prominent skin lesions. The lesions are very, very uh, what uh, like growths are very common and uh, easily we can identify the disease. Okay. <clears throat> However, sometimes uh, the confusion may arise with uh, some tumorous growth, but uh, in pox, you can see the numerous uh, 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 wart-like growths uh, you can see uh, in those uh, uh, fetalist part of the body, and that's uh, confirmatory in nature almost. So uh, in, in the clinical diagnosis, uh, the lesions are very, very uh, specific. So uh, hardly we can collect the samples for confirmatory diagnosis where we can go starting from the electron microscopy facilities are available. Otherwise, we can go for histosection to demonstrate this uh, into some bodies and then those uh, cytoplasmic changes. Then uh, usually we can isolate in the environment with chicken egg by cam root. And as you know, there is productions of uh, typical pop lesions in the coriolanthid membrane, which are diagnostically important. And then same time, we can isolate into second embryo fibrous cell culture and using the common diagnostic test, including the AZPT, most simplest test for virus detection. So uh, PCR based, including all, become a very easy method for uh, rapid and accurate detection of Fox uh, virus. Okay. However, for a molecular epidemiological purpose, we can further uh, compare the gene sequence of the viruses for. Uh, getting a clear idea about the different types and uh, genotypes of virus circulating in this uh, in a particular area. So these are some of the pop lesions uh, in the coriolanthid membrane, uh, usually seen in this way when they retrieve it from uh, the embryos and then after inoculation, the, we wait it for 48 to 72 hours and then we take out the uh, coriolanthid membrane and we can see this kind of population, which is the characteristics of all box virus infection, right? So in the cell culture, uh, so these are second embryo fibular cell culture, uh, spindle cell cells, and the growth of the virus causes aggregation of cells and uh, the rounding and ballooning of the cell. These are the characteristic changes uh, produced by the fall box virus in second embryo fibular cell culture. So electron microscope Rarely we get the chance to use it, but if the facilities are there, then uh, by simply preparing a mount, uh, we can uh, check the typical uh, uh, shape of the virus. Now coming to the uh, prevention and control, we have effective vaccines uh, to control these infections, and uh, the vaccines are uh, live pigeon pox virus or the fall pox, live epigenetic strain which are used by wing wave method. This is a, a different type of inoculation, uh, which preferred for um, vaccination. Usually the intramuscular inoculation doesn't give good results uh, uh, in case of this pox. Uh, so uh, the vaccination is practiced in the uh, injecting in the wing wave method. So, uh, I just downloaded a small uh, video on uh, 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 how to do it in the wing wave method. Okay, before that, let us see these slides uh, once again. Uh, 
So uh, this is the location. So using a teaser needle, we can dip the needle in the vaccines and uh, diluent, and then we simply uh, prick this uh, particular thin uh, skin holes in the wing, wing wave, and uh, that there by the uh, the bird get exposed to the vaccine. Okay. So I'm trying to share this uh, video. Could you see the video? Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah, could you see the screen now? Please respond. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just playing the video. Yeah, uh, can you see the video? Yes, sir. Okay. Excuse me, uh, can you uh, uh, listen the uh, background uh, description? No, sir. Okay, only the video. Okay, okay. That no, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll explain it. So this is an uh, uh, diluent, and this is that uh, lyophilized vaccine. It's a live virus vaccine. So it's a lyophilized form. So this is a teaser needle that we use it for pricking purpose. Okay. Yeah, then uh, what we do, we first uh, reconstitute the vaccines by mixing with the diluent. Uh, just pour some amount of diluent to the vaccine vial and uh, reconstitute the lyophilized vaccines with the diluent. Okay. Yeah, thereafter you mix it properly and then using a teasing needle, uh, they are. Yeah, they are again pouring to the original diluent bottle. Uh, these are the uh, reconstituted vaccine. Now they will give you demonstrations in a, a chicken piece. It need to be kept in the uh, ice pack so that uh, these are live at stream. They will be demonstrating in this uh, uh, piece of meat only and after that uh, the live bird. So this is the locations where you can inoculate it. Uh, yeah, this is the way like you have to dip it into the vaccine bottle and then you punch it. This kind of applicators are available for administrations. And then just punch it like this way. So what will happen? The vaccines will uh, be penetrating to the skin uh, folds. Uh, this is what we call as the wing wave method of application of vaccines. Uh, we can just plug a few uh, feathers and then dip into this vaccine bottle and the sponge it. This is the way of uh, administrating. So we need at least two person to hold it and uh, punch it the vaccines into this uh, wing wave. Yeah, this is the procedure they are demonstrating. Simply you punch it and then that is sufficient for inoculation. And at the end, we have to dispose of vaccines by using some disinfectant solutions and uh, discard it. Okay. Uh, this one. And this is the uh, procedure uh, for uh, vaccinating through wing wave method. Uh, the link I have given it here, somewhere where? Mm. Yeah. Mm. You can go to this YouTube link and see the video once again if you want. So uh, this is all about this uh, fall pox uh, uh, disease and how the prevention and the control of this uh, infection. Just go through any sort of book, uh, you will get all in details. And if any confusion arises, please do ask me the things. And this is in general for the entire fox uh, variety family. Then uh, I'm shifting to uh, the second family, uh, that's the S4 variety family that includes the African swine fever, as you know, this becomes the hot topic in today's day. And this become this is one of the killer disease in pig in areas where first time the disease entry takes place means that our animal never exposed to this infection earlier. It says that the mortality goes up to hundred percent. 
all animals will die when this uh, infection hit a particular farm and it uh, spreads from farm to farm. Uh, of course, not in the same phase that uh, the virus will get occur, but here in contact, the infection spreads and it causes massive economic losses as we could uh, see in the present day. Uh, for quite a long period, the disease was not entering. And finally, through Arunachal Pradesh, the uh, uh, disease entry takes place in India and uh, uh, the outbreaks are spread to all the uh, plain areas in uh, 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 Brahmaputra Valley, Arunachal Pradesh. And very recently, so Bangladesh again, it entered to the state of Mizoram. As you know, this is a, a big concern for the veterinarians, uh, how to uh, contain and prevent this, this is outbreak at the uh, but the most uh, worried point in the, in the worst scenario is that we don't have a vaccine to control this uh, uh, particular disease. So we'll be learning about this virus. We'll uh, going to learn about uh, the a little bit history, uh, how the disease is uh, um, spreading in, uh, from different places, and uh, the disease manifestations in the pigs and uh, uh, what are the constraints of controlling and what best we can do it at the phase of outbreak and uh, what should be our preparedness for uh, containing the disease in uh, areas, okay? So this is a particular family of DNA viruses, LERS DNA viruses called as s ID. And this family include only one member, it is the African swine fever virus. So. The initials of African swine fever and related viruses, they have given the initials they have taken as uh, ASFAR, African swine fever and related viruses, and given the name as the Esper variety family. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so, sir. Uh, okay, fine. This uh, uh, Esper variety family, the meaning, if anybody asks you, then you have to write it. It is the initials of African swine fever and related viruses, and given the name as Aspergillus. This is the only agent that causes disease in animal African swine fever uh, infection. Okay. Now coming to the uh, characteristic of the virus, this is um, uh, similar to that of the fox. This is also a very large virus, the DNA virus. Mm, of course, the size is smaller than that of the pox, uh, 200 to 220 nanometer is the size, and uh, having a very large genome in comparison to the other viruses, 170 to 190 kilopascals pairs so genome size. And as a result, this virus also carry majority of their enzyme to initiate uh, virus replication inside the host cell. That is why primarily, primarily this virus, they go in the cytoplasm. However, it's not exclusively, it's primarily in the cytoplasm. For uh, DNA replication stage, the virus migrate to the nucleus and utilize the nuclear uh, uh, environment for its uh, genomic replication. Uh, in, in, in comparisons, when we talk about the fox virus, in fox virus, they uh, never uh, uses the nuclear environment for uh, their replication. They, totally independently they can grow in the cytoplasm. However, these viruses also have their uh, own uh, enzyme system needed for the replication, but still they, 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 they utilize the nuclear environment for DNA replication. So this virus primarily replicate in the cytoplasm. These two are the exceptions of you know, the DNA viruses. All DNA viruses, they replicate in the nucleus. However, these two pox and Asper variety. In Asper variety, African swine fever virus, uh, of course, Primarily, they replicate the cytoplasm. There also are an example of antelope viruses. When they come out of the host cells, they carry the host cell cytoplasm in membrane as an antelope. But interestingly, this antelope is not essentially needed to initiate infection. They have it, they carry it from the host cell, but this envelope is not essential. Even if you destroy the envelope, also the virus will be infectious. So this is some of the general characteristics, including a uh, word that we use the nucleocytoplasmic replication strategy they adopted, right? So uh, coming to the uh, stabilization of the virus, this is the most uh, worried point for us. This virus can survive in chill carcasses, in frozen meat, 
maybe sauces, maybe any processed food products, the virus can survive for several weeks, even several months, it is recorded. Unprocessed frozen meat, several years the virus can survive. That is the stability of the virus and that creates a lot of problems. In the recent outbreaks, uh, 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 and the, 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 so a few people from uh, People's Republic of China, they fly to uh, Tokyo in Japan and the airport, they, uh, when they, uh, their luggage is checked, they found some frozen uh, pork and those porks were subjected to analysis uh, for the virus and they got active virus there and uh, even the, uh, the Japan, they uh, able to isolate the virus from those frozen meat. So that's a big concern like these viruses may remain in process as well as in the frozen meat for several weeks you know, for a long period. So in dried sauces and ham, these are some of the statistics say three to six months, even the dried sauces, the dryness not going to inactivate the virus. So the virus can persist in garbage containing meat scrap. Some of the finest epidemiological investigations reveal that even the airport uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the air, uh, when the meals are offered with uh, the pig sauces and processed pig products, and reaching a country, they, um, they, they throw all the uh, dust into this uh, garbage and the nearby the airport when the peak scavenges those garbages, then there is outbreak of uh, African swine fever recorded in certain countries. So there is multiple portals through which uh, the virus can uh, spread and cause disease that complicates the entire epidemiological disease infection. Again, we'll be getting more insight uh, about uh, more uh, aspects of uh, the virus uh, uh, the persistence in the nature. So it is very stable, 4 to 13 pH, the virus is stable. So not readily dis um, uh, disintegrated uh, by using the common disinfectant solution. So uh, it's a swing, uh, like uh, they also this uh, macrophenocytosis uh, that we uh, discussed earlier, uh, receptor mediated capturing mediated endocytosis process, the virus they enter and then uh, <coughs> the virus uh, they, uh, and the nucleic acid process the nucleus and uh, uh, there is uh, the genomic replications and the messenger RNA transcription takes place. And uh, the other part of uh, synthesis and assembly, everything takes place in the cytoplasm. And again, they come up through the budding process as a mature and low virus. These are some of the, this is schematic and these are the real transmission electron microscopy of uh, the box viruses. Basically, they are having the symmetry and they possess uh, and the envelope, right? So this uh, virus, uh, first, uh, initially, they have the tropisms towards these uh, alveolar macrophages. In the primary alveolar macrophage culture, the virus can produce some cytopenic effect and can be grown. So once the virus is uh, adopted in the laboratory by passing in the primary cultures, then the cell line, different cell line like Vero, PK15, uh, can be used for uh, growing the viruses. and they produce the cytopathic effect and the uh, inclusions for these are formed in there. However, at the same time, this particular virus, they exhibit a very peculiar phenomenon of heme absorption. The third, the C picture is showing the heme absorption phase, where uh, uh, the, the infected cell macrophages, where the virus infection takes place, they, they, they express a particular protein called P51 on its surface, which can bind with the uh, pig RBC. So as a result, in the infected cells, when you pour some RBC solution, the RBC will bind on the surface of these uh, infected cells. And this is what we call as the heme adsorption test. And this is a, uh, a frequently performed test for uh, rapid detections of uh, the African fever virus uh, with the less chemicals and uh, and other real things we can perform with uh, heme absorption and using the specific antibody, uh, the heme absorption inhibition can be performed. So, this is the cultivation and propagation of the virus. Now, uh, coming to this uh, infection, African swine fever, uh, 
first time this was recorded in 1921 in Kenya, and there almost 98.9% mortality was recorded. And thereafter, the virus, uh, the disease was uh, restricting to the African continent, to uh, sub-Saharan African continent, uh, which is for quite long period, till 1957. In 1957, the virus is the uh, spread to the scan, uh, sorry, that the Mediterranean uh, countries in European continent like Italy, Greece, and up to this Caribbean island near USA. So the disease uh, spread it. However, uh, that particular spread in 1957 was further contained and um, the, the, the disease was again eradicated from uh, outside the African continent. But again, uh, recently in uh, the virus again they spread it to the European continent and thereafter gradually gradually it has expanded to enter Russia then into the China South uh, uh, Asian countries and here in India so likewise the disease uh, spreading and um, from last year onward we could record massive outbreaks uh, from the northeast of India okay so only one organism is African swine fever virus. However, there are a lot of differences to be observed among the individual uh, isolates, and they have some antigenic dissimilarities. Uh, and um, on the basis of virulency, some strains are more virulent, and some are to be less virulent to the animal species. So. As such, there is no other serotypes uh, described, but uh, uh, there are differences among these uh, isolates uh, uh, circulating in this uh, different continent. So, as we wait for the genus and as for varieties of family, now if you uh, go to the uh, host, you'll find this, this occur in the domestic pig, which are the primarily affected by this infection. However, the wild pig, particularly warthog and goose pig, they act as a symptomless killer. That again complicates the epidemiology of the disease. So uh, in, in, in African continent, uh, a lot of wild uh, boars and wild hogs and goose pigs are found to harbor the virus in wild. And the more seriousness is the involvement of a tick species, soft tick, that act as a biological vector under the genus Onyntodorus, Onyntodorus species of teeth. It's a soft teeth of uh, which are available in the big uh, warthog burrows, uh, and they act as a biological vector. So these two points again complicates the epidemiology, and they harbor the virus in sylvetic cycle. That means in the wildlife, the virus are maintained. So. If you just try to understand our situation in our area, definitely the word hogs and the goose pigs don't have the virus right now at present. It is simply uh, the domestic pig population, they are getting the infections uh, through uh, infected carcasses and uh, different means. Now, gradually, what will happen? Our word hogs and the goose pigs will also get exposed, and that will be the most worst situation. The virus will be maintained in the wildlife and will be moved, whereas you know that uh, these regions we are having a uh, good population of uh, wild boars and hogs. So that uh, may uh, uh, near future create a severe problems for this particular reason, particularly the big husband degree practices in Marxist India. So uh, the soft pig lungs on the Dora sector of the political sector. So these are the different hosts, not only the domestic pig, even the wild pigs and the population may harbor the virus Environments. Okay, there's a uh, highlight to some of these events that takes place, as I said, from the Kenya, it was uh, transmitted to the European countries and Caribbean, including the Brazil and Argentina. Thereafter, it was again uh, checked later on, again 2007, uh, 1998 to Madagascar, and then in 2001 and 7, it has jumped into the European continent and Brazil it spread it to entire Russia and then uh, you know gradually it is coming to the China uh, people Republic of China and then 
the Southeast Asia, this is 2018 story. At this time, we are very allotted and we had certain uh, series of discussions with the state veterinary department that uh, some allowance should be created and accordingly it was uh, very nicely worked in the state of Mizoram, but unfortunately somehow it has entered through the Bangladesh. So gradually it is transmitted to the other areas and it uh, as you know, the China is the major producer of pork globally, and there is a huge crisis of pork happened in different countries. The U.S. has totally banned uh, importing the pork from China, all countries, and uh, it has really devastated the economy very badly. So gradually, uh, the OIE map, they start uh, putting the different uh, outbreak uh, sites in the Southeast Asia, and finally, um, it entered to the uh, northeastern region. This is the Hawaii uh, map of 2020, uh, the prevalence of the virus. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the mode of spread, uh, so the direct contact with the disease animal. The disease animal excretes the virus, so it's very stable. In contact animal, will get the infection, right? That's a possibility. So, will it happen in the, uh, if you see this, uh, how the virus enter into this uh, Northeastern region is through the uh, river Xiang um, uh, that flows to China uh, and entered to Arunachal in India. In the China part, they, they throw a lot of dead pig carcasses died of this uh, disease into the Xiang River, and uh, through the Xiang River it has flowed, and uh, the, in the bank of the Xiang River, the disease is uh, coming in contact with this uh, wild as well as the domestic pigs and it's transmitted. Then uh, farm workers, farm machinery, foam mites plays a very, very important role. Uh, um, uh, the virus is very stable. Anyone who is attending a post-mortem or coming in contact with the infected animal may harbor and carry the virus in uh, shoes and clothes. And uh, if they uh, might be thinking that after one or two days, uh, the virus may be inactive, but it is not a story. The virus is very stable. It may survive for a very long period, and through this uh, uh, process, it may get transmitted to a distance place. What I doubt that uh, the first of the uh, records of outbreak in the long flight is seen in Mizoram. All of a sudden, within uh, no time, we can see uh, a, a, a nearby the Aizol town. So, how it is possible? This is only by caring by the people. Then, uh, there is a practice of uh, uh, putting the uh, offals uh, into the um, uh, showing outside or giving as a pig food, mixing in the pig food, the scavenging nature of the pigs, the garbage is another aspect how the disease transmissions may occur. But uh, over and all, what we can say that uh, the virus is very, very stable, can be transmitted through grains, pork, gazelle, as frozen meat, it can be transmitted through processed meat, it can be transmitted through the farm utensil machineries for a long distance place. So we need to take care about all these aspects while uh, thinking of uh, uh, developing some strategy to uh, contain the disease uh, from an area. The, the last aspect, of course, this is not much relevant at this point, but near future it will be a big issue. If the virus still over to the wildlife, and as you know, the wildlife, uh, 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 they, they act as a symptomless carrier. Uh, this is again something related to the pathogenesis, uh, particular virus proteins uh, uh, in the different animal species they uh, behave in a different way. So, uh, the wildlife it gets spillover, and then um, if this kind of ticks like Onychodorus, uh, Mobata and Eraticus, these are two species, uh, Mobata in the African and Eraticus in the uh, in European continent, they have identified these two species of soft act as a biological vector. So maybe if the outbreaks do not restrict at this point, then gradually our wildlife will get the infections and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the populations will harbor it and that will be a most serious situation. Every year we'll encounter the disease, okay? So these are some of the inside pictures of uh, the thick species of tick, which act as a biological reservoir for the previous uh, infection. So we say that there is some uh, the, the, the biological vector in the different uh, new health stays from 
show the eggs of an infected pig, the virus will proceed. From the egg, when it goes to a different neutral stage, it will pass over the virus, and the entire tick populations will harbor this virus. And it is remain in the word hog and the tick uh, uh, cycle. And at any point when uh, they come in contact with the domestic uh, uh, populations, either through ticks or maybe meat products, waste food, fomites, or on the secretions and the things, the, the, the domestic uh, uh, ticks will get the infections and the result of the locker. So this is the domestic cycle and the silvetic cycle. Some epidemiology really reveal it is only the tick species. They are transmitting the infection from silvetic to the domestic cycle. So a very, very complex epidemiological scenario that occurred in the African swine fever. And this is one of the reasons why it is difficult to contain the disease. So, um, but it is not impossible. Many countries, they have shown this uh, things and eradicating the disease from this area. So there are different source and modes of transmissions uh, uh, as already we discussed it. Those are important point is go through it and uh, try to understand this all uh, different uh, mechanism how the disease transmission occur. Now coming to the pathogenesis, you'll find this virus uh, specifically they, uh, they, they attack these uh, dendritic cells and mononuclear phagocytes and what they can do is that uh, uh, some of the early viral protein can uh, uh, prevent the release of inflammatory cytokines by the phagocytes. As you know, until and unless the phagocytes put the stimulus, then the other cells, the phagocytes will be released, then the adaptive immune systems will uh, behave in a proactive way, but uh, the viral protein will shut down this activity of uh, phagocytes, and rather they can go inside the phagocytes because of their complex protein codes. So they can induce apoptosis program cell days, they can enhance the apoptosis process. Apoptosis is a normal mechanism, so any virus infected cells tends to undergo apoptosis, but this uh, virus will enhance the apoptosis process. Awesome day. As a result, what will happen, there will be Merck lipopenia, there will be Merck lymphopenia, there will be thrombocytopenia. So as a result, what will happen, the animal will suffer from blood clotting issues and it has extensive hemorrhages throughout the body. The virus is also having the trophism skills, the reticle and filial cells and out of all these uh, situations we can see extensive hemorrhages, blood will leak from the blood vessels. So extensive hemorrhages occur in the internal body uh, areas, maybe in the skin surface, surface must tissue, internal organ and uh, the, uh, the, the postmortem, what you can see, the edema, you can see the congestion, hemorrhages, infraction, and thrombosis. So in a native animal population who doesn't expose the virus earlier, this will lead to 100% mortality. So this is the pathogenesis of the African swine fever virus. However, it has been seen that in the wart hog, particularly in the wildlife, this uh, suppression of mononuclear phagocytes are less than that of the domestic animal population. As a result, some genetic predisposition lies with those uh, wart hogs. As a result, they act as a symptomless carrier. Again, once the uh, disease outbreak will occur in an area, gradually in the subsequent year, you will see the disease intensity will vary. It may not be up to 100% mortality. But most worry point is that if animal, if any animal survive out of this outbreak, they will be active in the carrier animal. So persistent infection is the nature of uh, this African swine fever infection. So persistently infected animal become a source of infection for other animal. So clinical symptoms like uh, after an incubation period of three to fifteen days, we see high fever, ocular level ditches, respiratory distress, vomiting. Blood stain, diarrhea, in coordination of gait, cyanotic extremities, and at the postmortem, you can see that the fetical hemorrhages in the kidney, the typical uh, turkey egg appearance. Also, you can see it here lymph nodes hemorrhages, you can see it, uh, uh, the pericute, acute, subacute, and the chronic uh, symptoms. Let us see some of the slides here. This is uh, the lymph node, mesentery lymph nodes, how they are uh, showing the extreme um, hemorrhagic conditions. Okay. Uh, skin surfaces. So at this point, in, 
all of you can say that yes, this informs exactly what we see in the classical strain fever, exactly what we see in the first infection, PRS infection. So yes, clinically indistinguishable. However, if we compare the mortality rate, then the difference starts here. The mortality is hundred percent. In classical swine fever, as uh, the, uh, the previous classes that we discussed, it never goes up to hundred percent. Say 40, 30, uh, maximum 50, 60 percent mortality. You can see not more than that, but here it is hundred percent. So, likewise, the same clinical manifestation that occur because of which it is necessary for uh, confirmatory detection and identification of outbreak. That is also another considered to be another constraint of uh, controlling the disease because it is confused with other disease. Until and unless we are equipped with our laboratory sophisticated uh, test, right, test like the PCR, so uh, the other disease may be um, confused. So the, uh, the, the typical clinical manifestation doesn't give us any conclusive idea, only we can uh, think about uh, this kind of viral diseases like classical swine fever, African swine fever, or PRS infection. So, uh, the laboratory diagnosis is totally depend on isolation and identification of the virus in the laboratory. So, for the isolation, definitely we need some specific uh, force and macrophase uh, cell, cell system for isolation where we can go for immunosorption test for confirmation. Or we can perform FAT test, which is a uh, rapidly performed test for detection of the virus. And uh, uh, other laboratory tests, including the PCR, this is a DNA virus, simple PCR, we can perform it for uh, detecting the virus specific gene. Okay. So let's see one. Uh, this is a picture of porosity formations uh, where uh, the, uh, the RBC is defined with the infected host cell. And um, yeah. And this is called as the uh, heme adsorption test. And uh, by using the specific antibody, this can be prevented. That is called as the heme adsorption inhibition. These two tests are uh, frequently performed for diagnostic purpose. This is a slide showing the FAT where the uh, fluorescence uh, um, activity you can see the infected cells. However, this is a, a better picture uh, for me where uh, these apple green fluorescence are not uh, the viruses. The viruses are only those uh, red stain area. This is uh, against this uh, P54 protein of African swine fever using a uh, different kind of dye, call it the rhodamine dye, that is this red color. And the green fluorescence are the uh, your splenic cells uh, to detect the myelin cells. And uh, they could able to detect that uh, within the myelin cells, the virus growth has taken place. So these red dots are the uh, FAT, positive FAT uh, slides uh, of uh, African swine fever virus. Okay. Now coming to this, uh, uh, the, the controls and prevention of the disease, unfortunately, we don't have any commercial vaccines for this disease. Why? The reason so is that the virus is complex epidemiology, varieties of uh, vector species, uh, and uh, several ways the virus is very stable. Over and above, the virus is a complex virus. So although it is having several kinds of proteins, like the pox virus, but the antibodies cannot cross-protect each other. So the serological difference among this uh, isolates uh, give rise to uh, status that a single vaccines cannot give protection against the disease. So, as such, we don't have any commercial vaccines available to control the disease. So only it lies with the management and the uh, policy making so where we can contain the disease. So this outbreak in uh, China, how at what intensity the, uh, the peaks is died, uh, you can see it here. So some of the diseases where it is uh, differential diagnosis is needed. Now, why, what, why it is problems controlling because of all these factors. Okay, we need uh, proper laboratory diagnosis to differentiate with other disease than the peaks or another, then uh, peak products can also carry the virus, different genotypes, 22 genotypes where with high variability has been recorded, then wild host, etc. etc. So uh, that complicates the whole um, process. So the so the first response, uh, what we can do is a notification system. So any outbreak, we must record it immediately, and immediately we should take the measures to restrict and kill all the animals and uh, uh, prevent the spreading to other areas. 
this is what i guess is doing at present the government the joining of the affected areas from one zone to the other the animal movement and even the regular movement should be restricted carrying this animals live animals ban on animal movement probably uh, it was not able to uh, maintain properly that's why the outbreak is seen of uh, however at the beginning of course uh, no because there because of uh, restricted animal movement not only the animal movement even the animal product movement also matters in the this transmission laboratory confirmation and destruction and disposal of carcasses as i said that in uh, uh, frozen carcasses the definite the virus uh, lasts for long period even in the fresh carcasses if not properly disposed then the wildlife can scavenge it and can spread it because the virus is very stable for quite long period in the environment then we must go for the depopulation that is only resource with us at present to um, contain the disease cleaning and disinfections and a study is needed for wild boars in fact probably what i feel is that at present uh, the wild boars is not very exposed but near future definitely there is a probability that uh, the wild boars uh, and the vectors uh, may get the virus so this is uh, for the um, african swine fever but i try to uh, conclude it within one session but i don't think that uh, it is sufficient for you please do read it from books and if you have any issues any understanding problems then please uh, contact me so that i can clarify your doubts further okay so don't ignore it these are um, the burning problems in the fields and uh, as a veterinarian everybody they uh, expect that uh, uh, you must have all the information very properly so that you can um, join hand to hand to the policy makers for restricting the disease okay so uh, that is about the african swine fever mm. and some the left of course on the box that uh, we try to uh, discuss in the station okay thank you very much uh, do you have any specific questions uh, we can have it 24 out of 31 again you left the session i don't know the reason why well every class has said that uh, um, you come up with some questions the next sessions but really you try to have some interactions don't know the reason okay thank you very much if nobody want to talk to me then i will post the link on the session thank you very much